everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes Do, and today I'm going to show you how to do a tubular bind off on 2x2 two two ribbing. It's actually very similar to regular tubular on a 1x1 one one rib. Um, we just have to do an initial setup round in order to switch our stitches around and get it ready for the tubular bind off. So, so you can see here on this sleeve of the Ansley tee, um, I have already done the tubular bind off on the two by two ribbing. So it kind of gives us just a nice clean edge to finish off our sleeve. Um, so yeah, you can find instructions for this tee that I'm working on through the description. Um, I just released this tee. It's super cute and perfect for the summer. So I am going to go ahead and we're going to do the second sleeve on the Ansley right here so you can see that I have worked to the end of my sleeve and now I'm ready to get started on the tubular bind off. So this is my um, under the arm seam here. This is where I started and picked up stitches. And my next stitch here is my first knit stitch of this round. So I am working in rounds for this. You can easily do this in rows as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. So before we can cut off our yarn and use our tapestry needle to do our normal tubular bind off, we need to get our stitches in the right order. So this initial like setup round is what is really vital to doing a tubular bind off on two by two rib. So what we're going to do is we are going to start by knitting our first stitch as we normally would. And then we are going to want to switch these two stitches around. So we don't want a knit stitch here. We want our purl stitch to be here for our next round when we do our tubular bind off. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to slip two stitches as if to knit. And then we're going to insert our left needle from right to left through both stitches and slip them back on. I got a little twisted there. So now you can see that my knit stitch is on the left hand side and my purl stitch is over here. So then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to purl my purl stitch here and then knit my knit stitch. So we've just kind of switched them and flipped them. Okay, so now I had just did a knit stitch, so I'm going to purl and then knit. And now, oh, I've got another knit stitch. So we've got to switch these two stitches again. So I'm going to slip them both as if to knit. And then using my left needle, I'm going to insert that needle from right to left through both stitches and place them back onto my left needle. And then this yarn is a little splitty, so bear with me. But now you can see that we flip flop those stitches. We twisted them so that we have our purl stitch next and then our knit stitch. And then you can go ahead and purl the purl stitch and knit the knit stitch. Okay, so your knit stitches are going to kind of stretch over a little bit. That's totally normal. And then we can just continue working. And we're basically just taking our two by two rib and turning it into a one by one rib. Just like that. And now we need to switch these two stitches again. So we're going to slip both of them off knit wise. And then from right to left, slip them back on to our left needle. And then purl the purl stitch. And knit the knit stitch. And then we can purl. And knit. 
So you can kind of see how we're just flipping those two stitches so that when we get back around to the at first part of our round, we will be in a one by one as far as our stitches go so that we're ready to do our normal tubular bind off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue doing that all the way around until I get back to my initial knit stitch here. Okay, another option if you are having trouble with the slipping of the stitches and putting them back is to transfer your knit stitch to a stitch holder and then purl the next stitch and then simply just put your knit stitch back on to your left needle and then knit that stitch. That also is an alternative instead of doing the slipping off and twisting. Um, you just take off that first knit stitch, hold it to the front, knit, purl the next one and then put it back on. So either one of those methods will work, but just make sure that you're switching your purl and your knit stitch. So again, I'm gonna keep going all the way around and then I'll show you how to do the normal tubular bind off. Okay, so I just finished off my initial setup round. So now all of my stitches are in a one by one. It goes knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. And I'm ready, I'm right back at the beginning and my first stitch is a knit stitch. So since we're working in the round and we're gonna be doing our tubular bind off, um, you're gonna want a locking stitch marker and you're gonna wanna put your locking stitch marker through the first two stitches on your left needle. So through this pearl, through your first knit stitch and your first purl stitch. Let's see if I can get this sucker on here. There we go. Okay, and then lock that in place so we know where our round started. Now I've been using the magic loop method. Um, so now I can kind of just pull this needle through because I'm not really gonna have to worry about that. I'm only gonna be working off of my left needle. Okay, so I've, ha I've kept a long tail of yarn. I might be playing yarn chicken here, but you'll definitely want to have about three times the width around that you're working or more. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna make it all the way around with just this little bit of yarn I have left, but you'll need to thread the end of your yarn onto a blunt tapestry needle. And what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be joining the knit stitches to the knit stitches and the purl stitches to the purl stitches all the way around and creating like a little, um, almost like a seamless, it's gonna look like your stitches are kind of just wrapping around to the other side. Um, and to do that, I've found the easiest way to think about it, at least for me, is anytime there is a knit stitch first, we're going to work into it as if to knit and we're going to take it off of our needle and then we're going to skip 
the next stitch, which is the purl, and work into the next knit stitch. And we're gonna slip our needle in as if to purl and then pull that all the way through. Oh, I think I may have gotten, there we go. My uh, cord for my needle, my circular is pretty wide there. Okay, so now we our first stitch is a purl stitch and we are going to stick our tapestry needle in as if we're purling and slip that off. We're gonna skip the knit stitch and work in the purl stitch next. And we're gonna bring our needle behind our work and go in between the knit stitch and the next purl stitch. And you can do this in two steps or you can do it in one. Insert your needle from the back to the front in between the next two stitches, and then we're gonna slip it knit-wise into the purl stitch and pull all the way through. And the next time we do this, I'll show you how to do it in two steps instead of just one. Okay, so here we still have our first two stitches on our locking marker so we know where we started. And now we can repeat those steps again. So this is a knit stitch here. So I'm going to go into it knit wise and just go ahead and slip it off. And then I'm going to skip the next stitch and work into the next knit stitch as if to purl and pull my yarn through just like that. Now my first stitch now is a purl stitch, so I'm going to work into it as if to purl and slip it off my needle. And then here's that little tricky step again. We're gonna go behind our work and insert our tapestry needle, the tapestry needle between the next two stitches. So last time I kind of switched, flipped this over and worked into that purl stitch as if to knit. If that's too difficult for you and hard to maneuver, you simply pull your yarn through to the front and then you can slip in to pur as if to knit, just going straight back. And it's the same thing, just in a two-step maneuver. Okay, so again, we're gonna repeat this one more time to show you. Our next stitch is in a knit column so I'm going to slip it off as if to knit onto my tapestry needle. And then I'm gonna skip the purl stitch and work purl rise into the next knit and pull my yarn through. Okay, make sure we're pulling that tight. So now the first stitch is a purl. I'm going to go in as if to purl and slip it off the needle. And then I'm gonna bring my tapestry needle between the next two stitches and push it into that purl stitch as if to knit and pull my yarn all the way through. There we go. So you can see the start of our tubular bind off here. Our stitches are just going to nicely flow over. And I'm going to repeat those steps all the way around until I have two stitches left on my needle. So again, I'm going to work into the first stitch as if to knit and slip it off. Skip the next stitch, work into it as if to purl and pull my yarn through. Then with my next stitch, I'm gonna slip into it as if to purl and take it off my needle, or off of my left needle and put it on my tapestry needle. And then I'm gonna bring my tapestry needle through from the back, through the next two stitches. And then I'm going to put it into the purl stitch as if to knit and pull it through. And I'm just gonna continue all the way around again until I have two stitches left on my needle. 
Okay, so here I am. I have the last two stitches on my needle and you can see my two stitches that I put my locking stitch marker in and I think I might actually make it with the, thread, the, the yarn I have left. So we're going to go ahead and insert our needle knitwise through the first stitch and slide off the needle and then we're going to go purlwise through the first stitch on our locking stitch marker. So just like this and pull it through. And then we're going to go purlwise through the last stitch on our needle and pull it off. And then we're going to come up through these two stitches and then put our needle knitwise through the last stitch. And then we are done. So now we can put our needle aside, take our stitch marker out, and all we have to do now is weave in our end on the wrong side of our work. And we have a nice stretchy bind off where our stitches just kind of disappear over the edge of our work. So this is a great way to bind off cuffs, sleeves, necklines, wherever you want a little bit of extra stretch or where you don't wanna see your bind off row and you just want your stitches to magically, seamlessly disappear. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you are looking for the pattern that I have just finished, or if you want to know about any of the materials that I used in today's tutorial, you can find links in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.